Learning how to use the Vault API is key to really understanding how Vault works. Hi, my name is Sam Gabriel, and in this video, I explain the API with a demo on how to use it. I also give you a couple of pro tips throughout the video, so stick around. And finally, this video lecture was taken from my Vault 101 course. I left a link to it in the description below. And now, enjoy. Hello and welcome back. In this lecture, we're going to take a look at the Vault API. Why don't we get started? So Vault has an HTTP API that you can use to configure it and manage the secrets. Output is in JSON format, which is very nice when you're making API calls. Uh, an example is to check the Vault's health using curl followed by JQ, which is a nice utility that formats JSON in, uh, in Linux. We'll see that just in a little bit. And actually an example right here, you can see we're calling, uh, we're running curl against the endpoint, uh, syshealth, and we're piping that to JQ so we can get a nice output like this one here. And it shows you uh, similar to what we saw when we ran the vault CLI commands. Uh, the sealed is false, standby is false, and so on. Authenticating against the Vault API, usually you uh, you need to authenticate. Uh, some endpoints don't need that, such as SysHealth. So, but most most uh, API endpoints do require you to authenticate, and the way we do that is using the Vault token in the X Vault token header. Here's an example, so you can curl the sysmounts endpoint, and as you can see, X vault token header has root, which is the actual uh, root token that we're using, and that will come back and give us the, the response. There's also the vault API explorer, which is very, very handy, and the way to access that is through the UI, and you can click on the uh, console icon and just type API and you'll end up with the open API um, framework so you can look at the different authentication endpoints or secrets engines uh, endpoints and so on and you can click try it out and then you can input some uh, some uh, inputs and then you can get the response and it's tied to the way you've authenticated into the UI. There's also the API docs that you can go through and see how that all works. A very handy flag that can be attached to the Vault CLI commands is output curl string. Uh, this is a lifesaver. It helps me in so many situations when I want to get the API curl command that corresponds to uh, my uh, Vault CLI command. So instead of executing the request, it's going to print out an equivalent curl command and it's going to exit. Here's an example, vault secrets list, and then you put the flag output curl string. The response that's come, is going to come back is the actual curl command that you can use. So it can give you the, the header that you use. Here's the token. It's grabbing the vault print token, which will come back with, with whatever token you are used or you've used to authenticate into Vault in the CLI. And then finally, the endpoint that you need to use. So very helpful, especially when you're looking to get the right path to hit which endpoint. So in this case, this one's very helpful when you were trying to do a, uh, a uh, put a secret at an endpoint. So in this case, we're trying to create the secret foo equal bar at the endpoint or at the path secret test. We put the output curl string flag again, and you can see the output that you would use in this case. Uh, we'll cover this in the KV version two, but you can see in this path, you would think that it would be secret test, but it's actually secret data test because we could also write metadata. In this case, we'll replace data with metadata. Again, we'll see that later in the secrets engine uh, part of the course, but just know that this is a very handy uh, flag to use when you're trying to get the curl command that corresponds to the vault CLI command. Also, there are client libraries that can be used. So in addition to the HTTP direct, uh, directly talking to the API, you could use a client library. Uh, HVAC is one that's used with Python, for example. There are official maintained 
client libraries by HashiCorp, and there's also community ones. Uh, Terraform provider is also something we should take a look at, and it's one of our recommended ways to uh, talk to Vault and using the Terraform uh, provider that come the Vault provider for Terraform. A good practice is for tools and pipelines to interact with Vault and not humans. In production, you really want to have your pipelines take care of secrets, whether they're placing new secrets or the applications are retrieving secrets. Here's a link to the client libraries where you can take a look and see what's available depending on whatever programming language you're working with. So why don't we... Uh, go ahead and do some hands-on and see how to use the API in practice. All right, so I'm running the same uh, vault cluster from previous lectures, uh, just the same dev server. And uh, we are going to run some commands against it. So I am going to export this environment variable. I'm going to open a new terminal window. And let's make it bigger. Let's export that. Make sure we are talking to Vault. So let's do a Vault status. Yep, everything looks good. So let's go ahead and write some commands. So we're going to run some API commands, some curl commands. And the first one is this curl. We're going to talk to the local host at per port 8200 version one of the API at the endpoint sys health. You guessed it, this should give us back uh, the health of vault, similar to what we saw with the CLI command I just ran. But it's nicer to actually pipe this to a utility called JQ. This kind of prints the JSON output in a much nicer format. If you don't have this utility, you can install it with sudo apt-get install jq. But since I already have it, I don't need to do that. All right, so let's take a look at the uh, curl command that requires authentication. The previous command we wrote didn't require any authentication because it's just a system health. But let's try a different one here. And I'm just going to copy this one save us some time and as you can see it's curl dash h for the different headers but this is what i want you to pay attention to x vault token root remember i'm using the root token called root and i'm talking to the local host at the sys mounts endpoint hit enter and right away i get the output as you can see so this is an example of an endpoint that requires authentication and you get back uh, all the different system mounts. Here's the secret system mount that we saw below or before in the previous uh, lecture, uh, where it comes by default for the dev server. And now let's also take a quick look at the actual uh, Vault API Explorer. So if you recall from previous lecture, we talked about the web UI uh, and I mentioned here that you can type some CLI commands. So one of them is just typing API. When you type API, that should um, bring up the API Explorer, which is very nice because now you can see all the different endpoints and you can try them out directly from the UI. So if we choose one of those, let's see. Uh, let's look up system status, maybe system health and say, try it out. And there you go. You get back the exact same uh, response that we saw before sealed, false, standby, standby, false. And it's also nice. You also get the curl command that uh, goes with it. So it's very nice to use and search for uh, specific endpoints and something that you're looking to uh, to work with. So that's the Vault API Explorer. I also want to show you the output curl string flag because that's also been a lifesaver for me. Uh, 
So here's a command where we're reading a secret or listing all the secrets. And as you notice here, we're running vault secrets list output curl string. So if I ran it without that flag, it's going to show me all the secrets engines that I have in the system. Uh, but because I ran it with the flag output curl string, it's actually giving me the curl equivalent of that CLI command. So I can actually copy this and run it, pipe it to JQ, mind you. And I fat fingered that. It's actually JQ lowercase. And I get the similar command. And you can see the different uh, secrets engines here. Let's do another one, just in case this one wasn't as clear. Uh, this one is going to put a secret. So vault kb put secret test foo equal bar. And here's the output curl string again. So you can see the curl command that's equivalent to that. So let's copy that, paste it, and pipe it to JQ. And once again, you get the, you know, some data from the response that this has actually worked. And if I want to read that secret, I would run something like vault kv get secret test foo or just test that should give it to me but I also could run it with the output uh, let's see output curl string this will give me the curl command which if I ran that should read the secret for me pipe it to GQ and once again, I'm reading the secret and you can see the actual secret is in the data uh, dot data foo bar. So I'm also getting it from JQ and you can go a step further and, and pipe JQ and get, get the exact value of foo. I'm not going to do that. I'll leave that up to you if you like. But basically what I wanted to show you in this lecture, how to use the vault API to grab uh, whatever information you need from from vault and the UI and the CLI actually talk to the API so the API is is the way to to interact with vault uh, but in many cases you want to integrate vault with your application so you can talk to the API directly through HTTP methods or you can use the um, uh, client libraries to do that so hopefully this has been a helpful lecture for you and I will see you in the next one